Algebra 1, Order of Operations, number 1.1b. The order of operations can be remembered as PEMDAS. It's parentheses, exponents, multiply, or divide, add, or subtract. Now notice it says or, it doesn't say then. You might have to multiply or divide. See? One doesn't necessarily come before the other. Then you might have to add or subtract. It doesn't mean that it has to be addition and then subtraction. Okay, it's either or. And parentheses are grouping symbols that contain an operation that should be done first. If we just saw 3 plus 5 times 2, remember the dot means times, and we went straight across, we'd have 3 plus 5 is 8 times 2. That's 16. And if we had done the order of operations, we would have done the 5 plus 5 times 2 first and gotten 10 and then added the 3 and gotten 13. That's a big difference. This one is wrong. Okay, you got to multiply before you add, and the answer is 13. Now, if an operation isn't in the problem, we just skip it. There was no exponents, there was no parentheses, so we skipped those and went straight to multiplication. There was no division, so we skipped it, and we went to the addition. And there was no subtraction, we skipped it, see? Now, the one thing I want you to remember is, for one problem, a variable has one value. If x equals 3, that's all it equals in that problem. If we had 3x plus 2x plus x, that would be, and x equals 3, that would be 3 times 3 plus 2 times 3 plus 3. If in a problem a variable has a value, then it's going to have that value through the entire problem. It might have a different ver value in another problem, but for that problem it has one value, okay? If we're told to evaluate a and then 3 plus b in parentheses, and that a equals 5 and b equals 2, we just plug in the 5 and the 2 where the a and the b are, and we get 5, and then 3 plus 2 in parentheses. And we do them in the parentheses first. 3 plus 2 is 5. So we end up with 5 times 5, which is 25. Now remember that fractions are just little division problems. I always say that. So they should be treated that way when figuring out when to do them using the order of operations. Do them, do the fractions, when division needs to be done. We need to look at the entire expression or equation before starting to evaluate. You can't just jump right in. You need to look at it and say, okay, or of operations, I see parentheses, okay, I'll do those first, okay? Now, if we need to simplify something, we've got multiplication here and division here. And see how they're split by the plus sign? So we can do this multiplication and then do this division and then add them together last, see? Because multiply or divide is before adding. So 8 times 4 is 32, and 16 divided by 2 is 8. It gives us 40, see? And if we've got this one, we see the parentheses, so we know to do 4 plus 5 is 9. We do that first. Then we do 36 divided by 9, which is 4. If we're supposed to simplify this one, we do in the parentheses first. And see there's subtraction, and there's division, so we've got to do this one. We do the parentheses, then we do this one, then we subtract last. So 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Now we do our subtraction. 24 minus 3 equals 21. Okay? See that? This is what I'm almost tripping over. This little thing keeps getting underneath my feet as I'm trying to make this video. So I'm sorry if it's so shaky. All right. So if we need to evaluate 2m over n, and m equals 6, and n equals 3, then we do the top, the numerator first, 2 times 6, which is 12. And then we put it over the 3. That's the division. See? You can almost look at it like the fraction line is like parentheses saying, do that up there first. Okay? 12 divided by 3 is 4. And if it says evaluate 2a plus b, and a is 4 and b is 2, we plug those in and get 2 times 4 plus 2. We do the numerator part first. 2 times 4 is 8. And we add the 2. See? There's the 2 we're adding, and the 8 plus 2 is 10, and we slide this all over underneath so that uh, the 5 is underneath, and we have 10 divided by 5, and that equals 2, doesn't it? Now, what if it says to simplify, and we've got 15 divided by 5 times 5 times 0? So we've got division here and multiplication back here. Well, actually, this whole thing is going to be multiplied by 0, so you know what's going to happen. It's going to be 0. Anything times 0 is 0. We do 15 divided by, five, divided by 5 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 0 is 0. It was 0 anyway. 
If we need to evaluate 24 over x and x equals 6, we just plug the 6 in where the x is and we get 24 over 6. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And if we see this one, we see parentheses and we're going to do the numerator first and if x equals 9, we're going to plug that in where x is. 18 minus 9 is 18 minus 9 is 9, see? And we write it over the 3. 9 over 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now we add the 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. See that? So, I don't know if you noticed, but some said simplify, and some said evaluate. Simplify, evaluate, evaluate. Did you notice that? If it says evaluate, that's when we need to substitute numbers before calculating an answer. Do you see that? This one had all numbers in it and says simplify. This one said a equals 4 and b equals 2. And this one said m equals 6 and n equals 3. And they said evaluate, didn't they? Now, if you're really confused about the order of operations and you want to see a simpler video, you can go back and in the description of this video is a link into my Intro to Algebra number 23 video, and it talks about order of operations. And I have several other in my other grades, like, you know, 6th grade, 7th grade. I'm sure I talked about order of operations, but I'll put a link for the Intro to Algebra 1, number 23, in this description, okay? We're going to go on to video number 1.2a, and we're going to talk about the commutative property. And if you're a regular subscriber of mine for a while, you know what I always say. It's like commuting, and I'll show you how, all right? Keep your chin up. We're going to get through Algebra 1 together, and you'll be fine. Bye.